Before diving into the science fiction films of the 1940s, I wanted to take a quick look back at the good, the bad, and the forgotten films of the 1930s. Since the beginning of the series, I've discussed 100 films, with 60 of these released in the 1930s. In 1930, talkies were gaining in popularity as studios raced to jump onto this new and exciting way to tell stories. However, microphones were troublesome and had to be hidden on set close to the actors so they could pick up dialogue, resulting in stilted performances. Talkies made exporting films to other countries a challenge. Nowadays, films in other languages are subtitled or dubbed over but dubbing was not a possibility in the early 1930s. This led to a small group of sci-fi films out of Germany that were written and filmed multiple times, each in a different language, with a different cast of actors, such as Gold, Der Tunnel, and FP1 Antwortet Nicht. These German productions were also filmed in French and sometimes English to be released in foreign markets. By the mid-1930s, post-production dubbing was possible. James Whale took advantage of this to create more dynamic scenes when directing Bride of Frankenstein in 1935. He was able to move the camera freely without the actors having to stay near microphones, creating more chaotic and frenzied action and a more exciting story. The 1930s also marked the decline of German sci-fi cinema. Directors like Metropolis's Fritz Lang fled, and others remained in Germany, but stayed silent as the Nazi party's influence grew, taking over German cinema to use it for propaganda purposes. Hollywood emerged as the dominant force in world cinema, spreading American culture globally by way of the silver screen. The production code, known as the Hayes Code, went into effect in 1934, significantly changing how Hollywood made films, curbing the use of sexuality and other subjects as a set of industry guidelines for the self-censorship of content was put in place to ensure that Hollywood adhered to moral standards. It imposed strict guidelines on the content that could be shown. The costumes worn by Dale and Flash Gordon in 1936 were risque but allowed, and toned down by the time she got to Flash Gordon's trip to Mars in 1938. Scenes from Bride of Frankenstein were also toned down or cut because of Hayes Code's guidelines against blasphemy, brutality, and irreverence. By the end of the decade, Technicolor was taking over Hollywood, but not in science fiction. Few genre films were made in color in the 1930s. Dr. X, a horror film from 1932, was a rare example, using a two-color technicolor process. We'll see the first three-color technicolor sci-fi film in 1940, but color wouldn't dominate the genre until the 1950s. Visually speaking, James Whale and William Cameron Menzies elevated the genre. Whale, who directed Frankenstein, the Invisible Man and Bride of Frankenstein had greater success at the box office and with critics. The mood and atmosphere he brought to classics from Mary Shelley to H.G. Wells elevated the sci-fi horror hybrid genre. While the production designer turned director William Cameron Menzies, who directed Things to Come in 1936, turned a stilted H.G. Wells script into a visually stunning cult classic. Due to the box office failure of Just Imagine in 1930, few studios took big budget risk with sci-fi for the rest of the decade. Flash Gordon and Things to Come, both released in 1936, were notable exceptions, though their success varied. Flash Gordon was a box office success that spawned sequels and copycats. The failure of Just Imagine would hurt the genre in the 1930s, so most filmmakers would combine sci-fi with other genres, like horror, action, adventure, and crime thrillers, to keep the genre alive. 
The sci-fi horror hybrid was the most popular and profitable. There were also sci-fi musicals and apocalyptic thrillers, but none matched the success of the sci-fi horror hybrid. Another way sci-fi survived was through serials, lower budget weekly chapters shown in theaters. These 20 minute episodes featured thrilling cliffhangers and daring escapes. This is where action adventure sci-fi thrived. While most serials were not based on existing intellectual properties, a few looked to literature and comic strips like Flash Gordon and Buck Rogers. Feature films adapted works from authors like Mary Shelley, H.G. Wells, and Bernhard Kellerman, bringing classics like Der Tunnel, Frankenstein, The Invisible Man, The Island of Dr. Moreau, and The Shape of Things to Come to the big screen. Box office successes of the decade included Frankenstein, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Bride of Frankenstein, The Invisible Man, and Flash Gordon with flops like Just Imagine and Things to Come damaging the genre and careers, with Abel Gantz's End of the World practically ending his career. This decade popularized iconic elements like ray guns, robots, and futuristic gadgets, often used as MacGuffins to drive the plot forward. We must also pay tribute to Bela Lugosi and Boris Karloff who appeared in numerous films, both separately and together. Legends of the genre still celebrated today. By the end of the decade, space adventures like Buck Rogers and Flash Gordon were popular. However, there were few feature films set in space. The Soviet Union contributed with a notable entry with the 1936 film Cosmic Voyage. The 1930s are remembered more for universal monsters and sci-fi hybrids, the space adventures of Flash Gordon, and the failures of Just Imagine and Things to Come. However, monumental steps forward were made with miniatures in Cosmic Voyage, Deluge, and others. Despite the world building towards war, sci-fi remained hopeful with heroes and cooperation at its core, while others spoke to fears and anxieties. Special effects were constantly improving as filmmakers worked to push the boundaries. The film industry recognized several sci-fi films at the Academy Awards. Just Imagine was nominated for Art Direction in 1930. Bride of Frankenstein was nominated for Best Sound Recording and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde's leading man, Frederick March, received the only win for the genre in this decade by tying with Wallace Beery for Best Actor. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode with the sci-fi films of 1940, which will be out on Friday, June 14th.